Welcome to the Familiarization and Planning series designed to introduce curriculum leaders and teachers to the Australian Curriculum version 9.0, Health and Physical Education, Prep to Year 6. In this first session in the series, we will be focusing on the Understand This Learning Area section of the curriculum before moving on to discuss the curriculum elements in session 2. The final session in the series will address planning considerations for the Australian Curriculum version 9.0. The QCAA acknowledges the traditional owners and traditional custodians of the lands on which we meet today. We pay our respects to their elders and their descendants, who continue cultural and spiritual connections to country, and we extend that respect to Aboriginal people and Torres Strait Islander people here today. We thank them for sharing their cultures and spiritualities and recognise the important contribution of this knowledge to our understanding of this place we call home. Today's learning goal is to understand implications of changes to the Australian Curriculum Version 9, Health and Physical Education, to plan for the transition in your own context. At the end of today's session, you will know if you were successful if you have more knowledge about the intent and structure of the Australian Curriculum Version 9, Health and Physical Education, and can identify actions for planning in your school. From this point forward, Health and Physical Education will be referred to as HPE. This recording is accompanied by a worksheet for you to record your responses to the activities and reflection points throughout the presentation. If you have not already done so, please take some time now to download or print the Session 1 outline resource. Outlined on screen, you can see there are three parts in this session. We will begin with an overview of the Australian Curriculum Version 9. We will then unpack the Understand This Learning Area section of the curriculum highlighting the changes in version 9. Finally, we will consider what these changes mean for you in your context and start formulating some next steps to take following the session. We'll start by orienting ourselves to the process of moving to a new curriculum and the purpose and structure of the Australian Curriculum version 9. Knowing what drives our curriculum helps us to contextualise HPE and transition our plans to the new version. Firstly, let's consider what the process of moving to Australian Curriculum version 9 might look like in your context. You may have identified a process like that outlined on screen now. This might mean that you want to reflect on current programs to identify strengths, limitations and opportunities. Review and audit your current programs against the Australian Curriculum version 9 to discern what is the same and what will be different from your current practice. Ultimately, once you have completed your reflection and auditing, you can start to make some decisions about how much you need to refine, realign, reimagine or remove aspects of your current plans to align with the Australian Curriculum version 9. This session will help you frame up the work that needs to be done to make sure you and your colleagues are ready for the change. We are going to be looking at the specific elements of the curriculum that will need to be considered for your teaching, learning and assessment. Keep your current programs in mind as we work through these elements. Think about the challenges and opportunities of version 9 for your school context. Let's start that process now by reflecting on your current programs and evaluating what you want to keep and what you might like to change. Therefore, your first action today is to consider elements that you know are working well. Reflect. Can you still see the place for them in the version 9 curriculum for HPE? Then consider parts of your plan that you are looking to review. Reflect. How can the version 9 curriculum for HPE provide an opportunity for you to make these adjustments to your programs? As we now navigate the changes in Australian Curriculum Version 9 for HPE, try to keep these reflections front of mind. Let's turn our attention to the curriculum itself. 
while there are changes in the revised HPE curriculum, the three-dimensional interrelated structure of the Australian curriculum has not changed as part of the review. The diagram on screen visually represents these three dimensions. The Australian curriculum consists of eight learning areas with HPE indicated in dark green. Then there are the seven general capabilities. Literacy, numeracy, digital literacy, critical and creative thinking, personal and social capability, intercultural understanding and ethical understanding. You'll notice the name change of the ICT general capability to digital literacy to reflect current understandings in the field. The general capabilities have been refined with changes to elements, sub-elements and continua. And finally, there are the three cross-curriculum priorities. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander histories and cultures, Asia and Australia's engagement with Asia and sustainability. When reflecting on how you are going to transition your current plan for teaching and learning, consider what opportunities exist to make connections across the dimensions. Now let's look at the learning area structure, which helps us to organise our teaching and assessment for HPE. Each learning area in version 9 now follows a similar structure, allowing for more consistency when planning. The Understand This Learning Area document provides details of the intent and a snapshot of the structure. The curriculum elements show the content. Now that we know where HPE is in the three-dimensional representation of the curriculum, let's look at its structure which helps us to organise our teaching and assessment. On screen, you can see an overview of version 8.4 compared to version 9.0 with the main changes noted. Let's break down these main changes now. In the organisation of the Australian curriculum in version 8.4, represented on the left, you will see that it is in two parts. The first part is understand how the learning area works, which included the rationale, aims, key ideas, structure and resources. The second part included specific elements about the HPE curriculum, such as the year level description, the achievement standard, strands and substrands, content descriptions, threads and content elaborations. Moving across to version 9 on the right, we can see the changes, especially in the language and grouping of ideas, helping to sharpen our understanding of what HPE is. Version 9 begins with the Understand This Learning Area section, which provides detail of the intent and a snapshot of the structure. Following the Understand This Learning Area is the Curriculum Elements section, which shows the content associated with HPE. Other variations between version 8.4 and version 9.0 are indicated by Changes struck out and bolded in dark green are the new sections which include the key considerations and key connections. These will, at different times, influence planning. Take a moment to review the changes in structure that we have just outlined. Understanding the structure of version 9 and the relationship between the parts is a key factor in strengthening our understanding of HPE and the changes within it. You may wish to pause here to consider what will be important for you to consider as you begin planning for version 9. We will now move on to our core focus for this session. It is the Understand This Learning Area section of the curriculum. On screen in the shaded box, you will see the sections that form Understand This Learning Area. We will work through each of these sections throughout the presentation. We will focus on the curriculum elements in the next session of the Familiarisation and Planning series. Our final session in the series will focus on planning using all of these aspects of the curriculum. As we work through the Understand This Learning Area section and the changes we can see in version 9, let's keep our process in mind. Here is where we can begin to audit our current plans and consider what is the same in Australian Curriculum version 9 and what is different. 
You may wish to construct your own note-taking template like the one indicated on screen to help you identify the similarities and differences you notice in the Australian Curriculum Version 9 for HPE as we move through the presentation. A table has been provided for you on the Session 1 outline resource referred to at the start of this session. We will begin by focusing on the intent of the learning area. We'll explore the introduction, rationale and aims. In HPE, the introduction in version 9 is one sentence. The Australian curriculum, HPE, is written on the basis that all students will study health and physical education from foundation to year 10. The rationale and aims then capture why we teach HPE and reflect the vision and goals for education in Australia. In doing this, it's important to consider the relationship of the rationale and aims to the goals of education in Australia, as expressed in the Alice Springs Imbantwi Education Declaration 2019. The vision is for a world-class education system that encourages and supports every student to be the very best they can be, no matter where they live or what kind of learning challenges they may face. With this in mind, the declaration sets out two distinct but interrelated goals. The first of these goals is that the Australian education system promotes excellence and equity. Therefore, as we are planning for Australian Curriculum Version 9, we want to consider how our plans can enhance equity for all and promote the highest quality teaching, learning and assessment experiences for our students. The second goal from the Mabantui Education Declaration states that all young Australians become confident and creative individuals, successful lifelong learners and active and informed members of the community. The three dimensions of the curriculum and the learning area content presents wonderful opportunities to engage with this goal. So, what role does HPE play in enacting these goals? Let's start by considering the rationale and aims. Go to the link indicated in the companion session document where you found this recording. Alternatively, use your mobile device and the QR code on screen to access the rationale and aims. Review the rationale and the aims, identifying the big ideas and or main points. Reflect on your school's plans to evaluate how the goals of the education declaration and the curriculum are evident in that plan. Please pause the session recording to allow some time for you to review the rationale and aims for HPE. Now that we have looked at the intent of the learning area, let's turn our attention to exploring the structure of content descriptions in HPE. This structure provides a way for you to consider the distinctive contribution HPE makes to Australia's goals for education and conceptualise the nature of HPE. Firstly, the revised curriculum positions the strands as being interrelated. The two strands, personal, social and community health and movement and physical activity, work together to strengthen students' knowledge, understanding and skills. The personal, social and community health strand focuses on the knowledge, understanding and skills needed to make healthy and safe choices. The movement and physical activity strand promotes appreciation of how movement in all its forms is central to daily life. In each strand, there are substrands under which are the content descriptions and content elaborations. Just a reminder that the content elaborations are not the compulsory part of the curriculum, but are there to support teachers with ideas and examples. Let's now look at the substrands of each strand. The substrands indicate that which is valued in the teaching and learning of HPE. Importantly, within each substrand are threads of content that tease out the knowledge, understanding and skills. You will note, however, that there have been refinements to the substrand structure. In black text are the version 9 names of the strands and substrands. In grey and with the strike through are the names and locations of Australian Curriculum version 8.4. Specifically, some changes include the names more accurately reflect the content within the substrand, 
They are written in the plural. For example, the identities and bodies, where an individual can look at their own or another person's health and movement. In HPE, an additional structural element of focus areas is included. The HPE content must be taught through these focus areas. There have been some minor revisions to the language and detail provided in the description. For example, one change to note is that the description no longer specifies years or bands of years for which the focus area should be implemented. This allows schools to make decisions about their students' needs. The focus areas are not mandatory. However, they do give breadth to the HPE curriculum. There is also opportunity to integrate the focus areas within the teaching, learning and assessment. The final sections of Understand This Learning Area provide further support and advice for teachers when planning for Version 9 in HPE. On screen are the key considerations for HPE. This is a new section consistent across all learning areas and includes the refined key ideas from version 8.4. It helps teachers think about teaching and learning specific to HPE. The first consideration is the HPE propositions. Five propositions that are informed by a strong and diverse research base for a futures oriented curriculum. These will be explored further in a moment. The next consideration is the importance of a healthy school environment to enhance the delivery of the HPE curriculum. The learning is validated and reinforced if the messages learnt in HPE are reflected across the school and wider school community. In addition, individual schools will organise and deliver learning experiences depending on local needs, resource availability and timetabling structures. The two new considerations in all learning areas, including HPE, are protocols for engaging First Nations Australians and meeting the needs of diverse learners. The five HPE propositions are used individually and collectively to guide program planning and pedagogy. They provide a framework for teachers to explore the learning described in HPE in a way that will create relevance and meaning for all students. Let's pause the recording now and reflect on how you currently consider these propositions when planning your teaching, learning and assessment programs. Can you articulate the knowledge, understanding and skills that are being developed, reinforced or applied during a lesson, unit or assessment? Does the teaching, learning and assessment focus on building student agency in health and movement contexts? What are the different ways that movement is valued across your HPE programs? How are you building capacity for students to become critical consumers of health information? And what opportunities are there for students to propose creative solutions or alternatives to meaningful real life situations and problems? The key connections in the curriculum support teachers to integrate HPE with other learning areas, embed relevant general capabilities and provide possible contexts for learning through the cross-curriculum priorities. This integration can enrich and deepen student engagement with learning area content. However, it should be considered only when it provides opportunities to strengthen learning area content where most appropriate and authentic. These QCAA resources identify the connections between the Australian curriculum learning areas and the general capabilities. Level overviews provide an overview of where the general capabilities can be developed or applied in the content descriptions. There are also continua for five of the general capabilities which provide more detailed information about the capabilities in the form of elements and sub-elements. This resource provides a sequence of learning for the capability from Level 1 to Level 6. This can be helpful for teachers when catering for students with diverse needs. The QCAA has also developed advice documents to support teachers to use the literacy and numeracy progressions. These progressions provide observable indicators of increasing complexity in literacy and numeracy 
which can help teachers to develop targeted teaching and learning plans for students who are working at, above and below year level expectations. These resources can support teaching teams to interrogate connections between the general capabilities and the learning area content in more detail. The final section of Understand This Learning Area provides further support and advice for teachers when planning for version 9 in HPE. The glossary is useful for developing shared understanding of terms used in the Australian Curriculum version 9 in HPE. Sometimes the glossary unpacks aspects of the curriculum where a concise term or expression has been used. For example, the term movement concepts is defined as a framework for enhancing movement performance. Movement concepts include body awareness, spatial awareness, effort awareness and relationship to or with objects, people and space. What are the key messages from this section of the curriculum that have resonated with you? Take a moment now to note down your key messages from this session. Let's pause and recap what we have done in this first session in our familiarisation and planning series and what can be done with the new knowledge to help us transition to version 9. Here is the summary of the sections of the curriculum we have covered in the first session. We have considered the intent of the curriculum by reviewing the introduction, rationale and aims. Next, we examined the structural changes for HPE by reviewing the strands and substrands. And finally, we reflected on some new elements to the curriculum by reviewing the key considerations, key connections and resources associated with HPE. To finish this session, Let's revisit the task we set ourselves as we began exploring the Understand This Learning Area section. What have you learnt in this first session about what is the same and what is different in HPE version 9? Consider how the changes will inform your planning by reviewing the similarities and differences you have noted throughout the session. What actions will you take to help prepare your plans for version 9? For example, you may identify the following actions to support the transition to version 9 in your context. Download and read through the new sections on key considerations, or organise time in your next year or school meeting to review the changes to strands and substrands in Teams. Pause the session recording at this point to reflect on the notes you have taken throughout the session. Identify two to three actions you will now take to plan for HPE version 9 in your context. As the session comes to a close, let us reflect on our learning goal and success criteria. We have built our knowledge about the Australian Curriculum version 9 HPE and identified some actions for planning in our particular school context. Before you begin the next session in the series, you may wish to access QCAA resources at the location noted on screen to extend your curriculum knowledge. There are many version 9 resources located here that will support you in planning for the transition in your context. These can be accessed by going to the landing page for a particular learning area and then clicking on the Australian Curriculum version 9 tab. That concludes the first session and our discussion on the Understand This Learning Area section of Australian Curriculum Version 9 for HPE. In the next session of our series on familiarisation and planning, we will be discussing the Curriculum Elements section displayed on screen. If you have any queries regarding the information from this session, please reach out to the K-10 Curriculum and Assessment branch with the contact details noted on screen. We thank you for your time in completing this session and look forward to working with you in session two of the familiarisation and planning series. If you don't do so already, we recommend you follow QCAA on one or more social media platforms to stay in touch with us and to find out about upcoming resources and professional learning.